So, so talk to us a little bit about how you actually build strength. I mean, from the programming and, uh, you know, frequency, everything uh-huh. else. I think, so very subjective to the client, and that's where the majority of my work comes in. Because, like, if it was so easy, I wouldn't be working the hours that I work because everyone would, you know, train the same. Um, for people to understand it as easy as possible, if you think about strength as a building, right, uh, the bottom of the base will be hypertrophy. So you'll have to do higher reps, higher volume, just to put some mass on you. Um, if you think about the building sort of like um, shaft, if you will, strength, and then at the top, you peak. So that's how we normally would program a client in a nutshell, really. So a hypertrophy block, a strength block, and a peaking block. Then you mm-hmm. taper, and then you compete. Okay. Um, so, so again, just breaking that down another yeah, level. Yeah. Um, so hypertrophy. Yes. So that's increasing muscle size. Yep, yep. Yeah. That's exactly what that means. Yeah. And how long would, when you say a block, what is that? Could be four to six weeks. Four, six weeks it okay. just depends on the on the client. It really does. Yeah. You have to, you know, how old are they? Um, how much can they take? How much volume? How much intensity mm-hmm. they can take? Um, it's very subjective, very to the to the point to yeah. to that person, um, and you learn that by working with them and making mistakes. This doesn't work. This doesn't work, and then you just um, yeah. But yeah, okay. And um, in regard to the sort of uh, maybe sort of breaking that down to a week, what would a typical week look like for for somebody training for powerlifting? For powerlifting, normally what I like to do, my favorite type of um periodization if you will so it will be dup so daily undulating periodization which means that i will manipulate the intensity volume or exercise type on that client every single day depending on their feedback and how they feel so and that's where i'm always on my phone and i'm always on my pc changing things because you want to be available for them and you work by their feedback so if it's daily feedback and you got 70 clients you know, um, but yeah, that's that's the way I, I would. So DUP, daily undulating periodization. So you daily, you change daily yeah. all those variables. Now, for example, um, a good way of of training somebody in an off season uh, for strength, I like to program a squat day, a bench day, an accessory day, and a deadlift day. When you um, accessory day, like getting nails and, and makeup. So accessory <laughs> day, accessory day, you want to think more about the posterior chain. Okay. Because in powerlifting, upper back, back, lower back, glutes, hamstrings are huge. Okay. And then what you've just said about that, that's a posterior Correct. chain, yeah? Correct. A posterior chain accessory day, that is amazing. The mm. more back work you do, uh, strong back, we say strong back, strong total, mm. really. Do you ever get a lot of people with like lower back issues because they're ch- overtraining maybe their posterior chain? Or no. Like that? So, so I never have actually. Um in my whole career, you get the old niggles, yeah. but the all the powerlifters that I train, because we really focus on that posterior chain, mm-hmm. you know, they're really pretty much bulletproof. Mm. Yeah, um, that's good. That, that's, and obviously form makes massive that's difference, it. doesn't it? And, and for me, my training, uh, even though I got a coach and I've had a coach for many years now, um, I always say I want to have a posterior you know, uh, yeah. chain day because it's, I think it's very important. And of course, they agree and, and we, we put it in there. Mm. Um, it's huge. Yeah. Huge because you do all the movements on the posterior chain. You know the squat, of course, is you think it's just legs, but that bar is is on your back. No, that's what I say. Yeah, bench. You are laying on the bench with your back. Very important and deadlift. I mean, and then we kind of talked about, I guess, what a week looks like. And you said sort of daily undulating periodization. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not the only one. It's not the only method, but yeah, hey, I, I enjoy it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then sort of a session. Yeah. Um, you mentioned you have you mentioned your split, so you mentioned there was the deadlift day, squat uh, day, bench day, bench day, accessory day, accessory yeah. day, and in regard to what that looks like, so things like, um, and I know what you're going to say, this is going to depend entirely on your client, and, yeah. and and anybody listening can appreciate that, but typically speaking, um, I know again there's a continuum in regard to your reps, yep, so muscular endurance, you're up to road sort of fifteen strength on in textbook you know you write down to six and below six, and then the hypertrophy for three and eight and twelve yeah but as an experienced strength coach mm-hmm. i mean from like you know sets and reps yeah. what does that look like as you said definitely depends but for example if i i'm just devising a uh, off-season plan for my client josh uh he came second in the last world champs 
Um, and we do want to take it this year. We want to take that first place. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's very close. Hit him on this and the first. They're very, very close. So right now, for example, uh, he's squat day. Uh, we are working on post squats. Um, so again, variations of the lifts to tackle weaknesses. Yeah. Uh, certain parts of the certain lift. parts of yeah. the lift. Correct. So he's doing a single one rep on that post squat and then four sets of four to back off, uh, with a lesser percentage. Yeah. Um, then, um, yeah. So, so to, to basically to tackle that weakness that he has, which is weaknesses. He's not even that he's weak of the hole, but he's weak. No, sometimes he misses depth, put okay, it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So we need to be sure that he knows where, where he needs to go. So for me, as a coach, as a powerlifting coach, going back to the point, I always like to prescribe singles and doubles on heavier weights. Mm. The majority of the time. Why? Because if we don't and we shy away from them, when we go back to heavier weights, they're going to feel quite alien. So I always like to have... Uh, heavier, heavier, heavier intensity, heavier loads yeah, okay. for w- every client. And would you do that every week or would you just do it maybe once a month? No, definitely every week. Every week. Every week. Okay. And alternate, you know, intensity. Yeah. Some weeks I got really high. Yeah. And if he's feeling beaten up, then we back off a little bit. Yeah, I always look at like when um, people do powerlifting training and I always see them obviously doing the same same movements yeah. and I always yeah. think... Is it is it too much of the same movement for you know for injuries and stuff like that? But I guess it's you might your body adapts. To that. It's what we do. That, you know, what I mean? yeah. if you want to get stronger on the squat bench, and you just have lift, to do it. Do it more mm. uh, now. But that is true. Uh, lots of the work and the adaptations and and the strength and getting better comes on those you know three or four sets of six yeah. after your single. It's not that just you do a single and you think oh, that's it. No. How do you cope with like the mental side of? Um, really focusing on just three movements, if that makes sense. Because I know personally, good point. I've you know if I if I was you know I I was deadlifting a little bit and doing bench and stuff like that, not powerlifting, but yeah. I was like focusing on that last year. Yeah. Yeah. And I find myself at times just being like, you know, I just don't, I just don't want to fucking deadlift today. Yeah, I'd rather do something else, and I would go and do something else yeah. because I wasn't really on a program. Yeah. I was writing my own program. Yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. How do you how do you cope with that? With yeah. You? So I get that question from some clients as well sometimes, which they get a little bit on on the monotony of the lifting. Mm, yeah. So then I will add maybe some variations. You know, maybe you're still doing deadlift. But it'll, it'll, it could be a deficit deadlift or a block pull or a post deadlift and so on. Now, if you want to be good at powerlifting, unfortunately, you it, have is, to do it, it yeah. is what it is. Yeah, It is what it is. And it, it takes a certain a certain person to, to be good at powerlifting, you know? Um, yeah, I can imagine. It's just the same as any other sport, I guess. Mm. You know? If you want to be good at it, you, you got to do it. You got to yeah. do it. You got to do it.